going to be doing an introduction to the command line. Uh, I'm going to talk about the commands for Linux and for Windows. I'm going to go over sort of the most popular commands. Then we're going to do a little bit of uh, input redirection, which is taking uh, strings basically and sending them to different files. A string is just an array of characters. An array is a collection. Um, a character is just a representation of a letter, basically. Um, so yeah, we're going to go over the most basic things. Uh, um, if you're on Linux, uh, a shortcut to opening up your command line, let me just type exit here, first command, uh, is control alt T, and then this should bring up your command line. Uh, for Windows, you can press the Windows key and then type in CMD command and press enter, and that should bring up your uh, MS-DOS emulation kind of thing. Um, so the first command I like to start off with is man, M-A-N, and that's manual. Um, and to see what the manual for the man command is, you can just type man, man. And here's all the different arguments you can do. I usually don't use this, so I just type man. Um, so for example, uh, we'll do man exit. Yep, and it just ends the uh, shell, basically, is what it's saying. Um, so another command is clear, which I just did, and that'll clear your shell. And in Windows, the equivalent for that is CLS. Uh, but if we type some stuff in here, like uh, man, man, um, CLS, CLS doesn't really work on Linux unless you alias the command. And an alias, um, we're not going to do any aliasing today, but we could do that in another video if, if somebody wants to leave a comment and ask how aliasing is done. An alias is just a uh, another command. It's, it's that is the equivalent to whatever you want it to be. So for example, say instead of typing man, I wanted to type manual, um, I could write an alias that will do that. Um, Okay, so sort of the most basic command is ls, um, and this is just going to list everything in your directory. So let's look at the manual page for that. List directory contents, okay. Um, mine is alias so that whenever I type ls, it automatically gives me the colors um, for like different directories and stuff. So first let's just see where we are. Yes. So for me, uh, directories appear blue and then files um, will appear a different color. I can show you an example of that. So you see I have some videos, um, a picture here, and some exported videos from the screen capture program I'm using. Um, and those are appearing in a different color. And then just like this movie file is just white. And yeah, the directories are blue. Um, but yeah, let's, let's go back a little bit. So um, to list the contents of whatever the working directory that you're in, the working directory is the current path that you're in. So you can see I'm in uh, this little squiggly means like the root folder and then desktop create indie. And that's right here, over here um, on the GUI. GUI stands for graphical user interface. That's what modern operating systems use. Um, um, and yeah, let me just say that a good reason to learn the command line is that it helps you navigate through things on your computer uh, quickly and you can open up text files quickly. Um, yeah, it's basically very efficient. And a lot of programs, especially for programmers, um, they only use like a uh, command line interface. Um, it's easy to compile your programs quickly from the command line. And we're going to do a little bit of that. We're going to write a small Java program too. But anyways, um, sidebar. So what, to list the contents of the current directory that we're in, we can type ls. That's it. Um, you can also type dir, which is the Windows equivalent. Um, you can see that the color thing isn't uh, aliased here, so I'm not getting like my nice uh, color formatting. Um, yes, so that is ls. Um, you can also type 
well, let me show you the manual page, PWD to print your working directory, which is our current path. Let's see, home, Rolo, that's my name, desktop, create indie. Okay, um, so that's all well and good. Why don't we try to make a directory inside our, you know, more important than that is change directory. Let's do that. Um, CD is change directory. And then if you type these two dots, it'll move you back a level. So we were in this folder here, and now we just want to go back to the desktop. So we're in here, and now we just want to go back a level to the desktop. So we type the dot dot. Uh, if we want to go back to that folder, we type CD create indie ls and that's where we are so that and now our working directory is different um, so let's clear that um, and here's the manual page for CD actually there isn't one yeah so if you type this in there's nothing uh, I don't know why uh, another important one is help and help list some common commands. Um, exit, echo. Uh, what else we got here? PWD, kill, jobs, if. Okay, yeah, so that's some good stuff. Um, let's see, man, and then if you do this, help. You can write help as one of the arguments and it'll give you like this list of all the different uh, arguments that you can have. These ar arguments are basically just things that you write after the command um, and then they have different behaviors. Um, for instance, the ls dash dash color will list everything with color. No, my, mine's already alias to do that automatically, but yours probably isn't. So if you want to have the directories appear with color, you type ls dash dash color. And uh, I think I mentioned that dir was the Windows equivalent, right? So uh, dir, D-I-R, will list your directory. Um, yes, so we did man. Uh, let's make a directory now. So let's go to, should I empty my trash? Yeah, I'm gonna empty my trash. Um, let's go to create indie, and let's make a directory called to tut for tutorial okay and now we can list our contents and now you see we have our tut folder there so I'm going to navigate to that directory oh I kind of didn't ex explain that well mkdir is the equivalent um, command in Linux and it's, this, it's, it's the same for Windows um, it'll make a directory um, there you go make directories so that's pretty simple um, we can remove that directory in two different ways. One is with the rmdir command, and the other is with the uh, rm command, just remove. So let me show you those. Man, rmdir, remove empty directories. So you can only delete empty directories with that. And the other one is uh, rm. So show you uh, rm. Yep. And that you can delete directories with file contents in them. Um, so let's try deleting our tut folder. And to do that, we're going to use the rmdir. So rmdir. And let me just open this up at the same time so that you can see what's going on. So there we go. there's our tut folder. And I'm going to delete it. rmdir. And it's gone. Um, so now let's make one and then let's put some content in it. And then I'm going to show you that you can't use rmdir to delete a folder with a file in it. Okay? So let's do mkdir tut. And then let's navigate over to that directory. I'm going to do it here for visual purposes. And um, we want to make a file in there. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do that. I like to use the touch command. Change, it says change file timestamps, but you can use it just to make a file. Um, another way to do it would be to type the name of the program that you want to use to create the file, and then the file name, 
and that'll do the same thing. So let's do it both ways. Um, first, let's use the touch command. Touch random dot text. Okay, now we have something in there. It's empty. Um, another way would be to use the name of the program. So let's try gedit. If I can type random to dot text. And it opens this up. And I didn't save it. Let me save it. Hold on. Save. Okay, now we have two text files that we created two different ways. So let's clear the screen because I have OCD. And um, we want to just delete this directory. And um, we want to delete everything inside it. So if we try to do rm dir for whatever reason on tut, we can't do it because it's not empty. Um, I don't know why they did it this way. It seems kind of silly. Um, so we're going to use rm instead. The rm equivalent on Windows, if you're using MS-DOS, is delete, D-E-L. So, but I don't think that'll work here. Yeah, no command found. Um, so let's use rm tut. And then we're going to use rm rl. Ooh, whoops. Um, let me check something. Ah, f and then Let's see other one. R. Okay, we want RF tut. Okay. And let me make sure we're in the create the right area. Okay. R M R F tut. Okay. I deleted it. And just closed that whole window. So um let me go back and show what I did. I'm sorry for the little uh, hiccup there. Um, force means uh, it's not going to prompt us because if, if you do it otherwise, um, it, it usually prompts you before you delete something. And R is recursive, means that it's going to delete everything inside of it. Um, it sort of works backwards and then deletes everything. That's what recursion means, sort of. Um, Okay, so let me review a little bit. So to change directories and go back a level, you type CD and we'll just go all the way to the root. This is my root folder. And then to go to another one, um, let me just see. Yeah, so uh, you can type CD home and then you can like uh, do multi multiple levels at the same time if you know what the levels are. Um, so this is going to jump me right from the root directory. You can see I'm there because of the backslash. And um, it's going to jump me from there to home slash Rolo. So now we're there. And now we're uh, here. Yeah. Um, Okay, I want to speed this up because I don't want this video to get too long. So let me see what other commands would be good. I'm going to bring us back to the create. Oh, no, we have to go to the desktop first. CD create indie. Okay. Um, what other commands would be good? I have my handy list here. Um, I think that's most of them. Um, sudo is an important one. Um, that's a purely Windows thing. It basically just gives you permission to do like administrative tasks. So if you want to install a program, it'll help with that. Um, let's do sudo. Well, first, if you want to install something on your computer in Linux, you can just type the name of it to see if you have it. So say I want to install Ruby, um, the programming language. I can do sudo, which will give me like administrative permissions to do it. apt install 
Ruby. And then it's going to ask for my password. Um, I'm just going to type in, uh, what do I want to do here? Yep. Uh, type in my password, and then I'm not going to actually do it because I have no space on my computer. That's what happens when you buy a $200 laptop from Amazon. Um, I really hope this is all recording. Uh, yeah, so man, sudo, did I show this to you already? It's going to show you um, basically that you, you would use this when you want to run a program as an administrator or install something. Uh, so a safe bet is if like you're not sure if you have administrative privileges before you uh, run a program, just sudo it. Um, I hope that made sense. Uh, so, yeah, let's check where we are. You can also do P PWD. And now I think I'm going to do um, some text stuff and some input redirection and concatenation. So, one interesting command is echo. So, let's see the manual for echo. And it's going to display a line of text. Okay. So um, I mentioned what a string was before. Uh, it's an array of characters. It's, it's basically just words. Um, so we're going to print a string to the uh, standard output. And there's three different streams. There's, there's standard input, which is the zero string, uh, stream. There's standard output, which is the first stream. And there's standard um, error, which is the second stream. stream. Um, and uh, they start at zero because programmers like to index things at zero. I don't really know why. It's just like a convention. Um, and anytime we see some output from the terminal, um, that's the standard output stream generally. Unless you get an error, then it's the standard error stream, which is the second stream. A little bit confusing. We're not going to work with like all the different types of streams today. We're mostly just going to do input and output. So echo and then the stream so let's say hello world and it should say hello world back to us cool um let's uh do something more with that did i go over the touch command i did so let's say we want to put um something that we write in the terminal into our file so first, let's make a file. Um, I'll just call it tut again. So you remember this command, make directory, tut. And there we go. And then let's navigate over there. And then let's just create another one called test1, just so I can demonstrate. And then we're going to go to test1. OK. And now let's make a file, touch. And we'll call it blah.txt because we're stupid. And um, let's display the contents of that. There's a couple different ways to do this. Um, I like to use cat. Um, but there's also more and Sorry, it's not cat.txt, it's a command. I, uh, you can also use uh, more or less. These are other Linux commands. I think in Windows, you can only use more. I'm not sure if there's a cat command. Somebody can correct me on that. But in Linux, you have both those options. And they're basically just ways of displaying the text in the command line. That's how I use them. Um, so cat, concatenate files and print on the standard output. OK, that sounds good. So let's display what's in our file. It should be empty. So we'll do cat blah.txt. And I hit tab there to autocomplete. Um, if you don't want to type out the whole thing, just press tab. There's nothing there. So let's put something in there. Um, first, why don't we just open it up? Um, gedit. That's the name of the program I use for editing text sometimes. OK. This is a random thing I am typing. Save. Um, you can see my OCD here. Um, now, let's display the contents of that using the cat command. Cat. 
blah dot text. Yes. Awesome. So what if we want to add something, some text to our file without opening up gedit again, because it's kind of cumbersome. Um, well, we can use our echo command, and then we can redirect that output to our text file. And it's really simple. So let's just say echo. Um, this is going to delete the contents of the file um, and then add our text. But there's another way to do it where we just append our text to the end of the file. And I'll show that too. It's really simple. So I was going to say delete contents of file and put this stupid string in there instead. And then we put that little symbol there, the greater than symbol, and then we type the name of our file. And now we want to display the contents of our file. So I'll just click on it to show it here. Now we have this in there. If we just want to do it from the command line, we do cat blah dot text. Okay, and say we want to append it instead. I'm pressing up on the key there to go through all the different, um, it's the up arrow key to go through all the different commands I've done already. I can just do that. So now this will put, let's just say, ooh, that didn't work how I wanted it to. How about delete? No. All right, I'm just going to rewrite it. Ooh, this is taking a while. Okay. I'm going to say appended text. And this is just going to add uh, the, the string appended text to what we already have there. So let's uh, cat our blah.txt file. Okay, so now we have our original string in here, and then here's the text that we appended. Um, so that's the basics of uh, text files, creating them, appending stuff to them. The last thing I want to do is show that you can take uh, input from the command line and send it to a program. So we're going to write a small little Java program. Um, and let's do that now. So to check if you have Java installed on your computer, just type the word Java. And if you do, this will come up. Otherwise, it will ask you to install it. Um, in Windows, you're going to have to like do some stuff with environment variables. Uh, if you want me to make a tutorial on that, let me know. Um, but on Linux, you just type the word Java. So let's make our file. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. So I'm in test one now. OK. This is where I was before, wasn't it? Um, Let's make our Java program. So let's do mm, gedit. We're going to use the gedit program. Um, and we will call it stupid.java. And I'm going to write this really short Java program that's going to accept some text input. So public, that means anybody can access it. Class, um, it has to be called stupid, otherwise we get an error. It has to be the same as the name of your file. And then this public, static. Static means that it's allocated on the stack. It's a little complicated. Um, but anytime you create a Java program, you need to have a main program, a, a main method generally. And that's public static. Void means it doesn't return a value. So uh, if we wrote int here, it would return an integer. The, the function would have to return an integer. Um, but ours doesn't have to return anything. And then string args. And that's how we're going to pass in um, our arguments. Um, it's, it can take an array of characters. Um, in this case, so it's like a variable size array, um, an unlimited amount of different strings. Um, and then we're just going to have the program. Um, I'm going to do a loop 
because that's more dramatic. So we'll just say while true. System dot out dot print line args zero. So what this is going to do is while true, which means it's always true, it's going to do this forever. We're going to print out the first argument that we are given from the command line. Okay. Um, so some other notes here. While is just a loop. True is a Boolean value. Um, it's a, it's like a constant value that doesn't change. Um, system is a class. Out is a object within the class. It's a static object. That's why you can access its methods directly. Um, and print line is a method that we use to print a line to the standard output stream. Um, that's all a little bit confusing, but that's what this little program does. Um, so we're just going to take the input that we get from the console and print it out indefinitely a million times, and then I'm going to have to close the command line. So let's try and compile this program. Let's save it. Let's check and make sure that it's there. We can also see, oh look, it puts a little coffee pot there. That's cute. Um, so let's compile it, and the command for that is java c stupid.java, and let's hope we don't get any errors. Okay, so it compiled it, and then it made this class file, which is bytecode, um, and bytecode can just run, I, I think it's a step between machine code, which is zeros and ones, which is what the computer understands, and between our java code, which we can understand. I would think of it that way. It's like an intermediate step. It's compiled code. Um, this is for beginners, um, but there's a lot to digest here. Uh, you, I recommend doing some outside reading for this too, figuring out uh, how Java programs work and stuff like that. Um, so anyways, we have our compiled code. Now we want to run it. So to do that, we just write Java, and then we write the name of the file. Now this is going to produce an error because we're not giving it any arguments. See? Array out of bound exception. It's looking for the zeroth element. Remember I said it starts indexing at zero? And it's trying to find that, but we didn't supply anything. So the way you do that for a Java program is you say Java, stupid, and then you type your argument. So we want it to say this is the end of the tutorial. Okay, and our, our while loop is running indefinitely. Oh, where'd it go? Somehow I lost it. Sorry about that. Let me just... Ooh. Okay, we're back. Um, let me do that again. Is it gonna? Yeah. Um, what it's doing is it's uh, it's printing out uh, the argument that we sent the command line um, indefinitely, and uh, that was just trying to prove to you that you can take input from your command line and, and print it out. Uh, so I think that's going to do it for this tutorial. I uh, covered a lot of different topics today. If you want me to go in depth on something more or if you want me to focus on a different aspect of Java programming or Linux commands, uh, feel free to drop me a line. I respond to all my comments. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So. Ta-ta for now. Uh, I hope everybody has a nice day, evening, night, morning. If you're watching this on the East Coast of the United States, I hope you stay warm. 
if you're watching this on the west coast and it's warm there already i hate you and i'm jealous um i think that's everything so take care guys see ya bye